Weber, and this is my wife Donna. We're, we own Webcrest Farm. Uh, we've been here since 1976 when we got married. We started the farming. Uh, it's been in my family since 1920. Uh, we have two, two sons that have helped us out. Uh, one lives here on the farm, the other one comes and visits quite often, helps out. Uh, there, there's five generations here. Uh, and this is what we do for a living is farm it. And we've worked with the watershed since 1995 and uh, done quite a few projects with them. In 95, when the first, uh, well, when the hearings, the MOA was started and, and that type of thing, I, you know, we, we kind of, I went to a couple of meetings and uh, I guess the way I felt was, uh, if you can't beat them, join them. And, you know, if they did what they said they were going to do, they were going to put farmers out of business. So when negotiations were going on and stuff, you know, I paid attention and listened and, and uh, I joined up with, with them to, uh, get things started. Uh, we were one of the first ones to put up a calf house, greenhouse. We did have it for 25 years and uh, it was still working when we replaced it with this. Uh, but it, this is a lot better. You know, the, the other one was getting to the point where it had to be replaced or something done with it. And uh, so it worked out good for us that way. I'm Dan Deisenroth and I'm a conservation planner at the Watershed Agricultural Council. I've worked with Ed and Donna Weber for over eight years on their whole farm plan. Webcrest Farm is one of 245 large farms in the west of Hudson watershed that participates in WAC's voluntary ag program to protect the New York City drinking water supply. Webcrest Farm sits at the headwaters of the Little Delaware River. The Little Delaware River is the largest tributary of the west branch of the Delaware River. The west branch of the Delaware River feeds the Cannonsville Reservoir, which is one of the reservoirs in the New York City watershed water supply system. Calves that are zero to three months of age shed cryptosporidium. By installing calf housing facilities in the New York City watershed, you can protect the water quality by helping the farmer raise healthier calves who are a lower risk of shedding, and also by allowing the manure that is produced by the calves to be handled separately so that it can be applied in a way where it will not run off into the water. The calf facility is one of the better things that we've done with Watershed. Uh, makes my wife happy, which makes everything a lot better. Uh, it's a lot easier for her to take care of the animals and also for me to feed and clean. Uh, she has healthy calves. She's always had healthy calves, even with the former greenhouse that we used. Uh, and this one's a lot easier to work with. And uh, it works good. We haven't had any issues really that we can't handle that uh, had any problems with it with the facility at all. Well, the calf barn now holds, uh, I believe, 12 uh, one to three month old calves. And there's three pens that hold uh, the older calves. Uh, we do have a uh, utility room that uh, we're able to clean our buckets with and get the water from. Uh, and helps her keep uh, the buckets clean and we don't have to take them back into the other milk house to uh, wash them. And so it has helped out as far as traveling back and forth between the two. <laughs> the only thing we do have to do is carry the milk out here, but that's not a big deal. Um, the calf, the milk house is uh, beneficial because it's also heated. And if we ever have a problem with a calf, possibly that needs to get warmed up, we can always stick it in there and, and warm it up. I mean, the floor is heated. Uh, and so that was, a, that was a plus. Yeah, when we first joined up, we got the first the, the greenhouse. Uh, yeah, it was new to us too, because uh, we used uh, hutches before that. And we're up here on a hill, and it's not that comfortable in the middle of winter. And uh, so, you know, if somebody's not happy, we're not happy. So this is what they came up with, the greenhouse. And uh, that was a lot better. And uh, so then, we, then when they put this up after so many years, of, you know, they say they were here for the duration. And uh, that's basically what, you know, farmers need. They can't just, you know, somebody come in and just do something and then walk away and leave. And, and they've done many projects with us and this is one of the best ones they've done so far. The Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program is a USDA program that creates forested buffers to prevent runoff from entering streams. Okay, about 15 years ago, we got approached about doing the CREP program on some of the, the streams we have and we've done that. So that's 
you know, it used to be, you know, you had neighbors that you could uh, come together and help each other out if they needed it, and now there's few, there, few and farther between, and we still do help each other, but you're a lot further away. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's still a great place to raise the kids and stuff. We got a conservation easement because I wanted this farm to stay a farm. I didn't want it to be developed. Back in 1976, there was uh, 36 farms, operating dairy farms in Bovina, and now there's two left. And so it's been a drastic decrease. Uh, a lot of beef farmers have started up. Uh, this farm itself, Webcast Farm, has taken over well, probably five other farms, at least the use of the land, uh, if not for pasture, mostly hay or, or for, for uh, corn silage. That's all one of the main reasons to stay for farming is, is yeah, we don't make much money at it, but uh, it's a great way to raise kids and make a living.